Good morning, my friends. It is our final week talking about compassion. And remember, compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. And all month we've been talking about how we cannot have compassion for other people unless we first have it for ourselves. And we've been practicing ways of sitting with God, remembering his love for us, remembering how compassionate he is for us so that we can in turn do that for other people. So this morning, we are going to feel God's compassion in our body. So stand up with me and feel your feet really planted on the ground. Really feel every part of your foot flat in your shoes on the ground. Can you feel how strong the ground is? Can you feel how strong your feet are connected to your strong legs? Feel that strength right now in your legs and your feet. Good. Now let's take a deep breath. Ready? Good. I want you to do it one more time and I want you to really think about how the air is filling up your lungs. And when you think about the air filling up your lungs, think about that air being connected to God's spirit. So it's almost like God's spirit is filling your lungs. Are you ready? Good, good. And now I want you to think about how God's love and power is filling up your arms. I want you to put them out straight in front of you and feel them really, really strong and straight out in front of you. Good, good. Now I want you to pretend you're holding a big, big ball in your hands and you're gonna hold that ball and that ball is full of all of your weak and the worries and the concerns and all the stress, maybe school, all the things you've been feeling and thinking this week and it's all right here in this big ball in your hands. And remember, God's love and care for you is supporting your arms. And now I want you to take that ball and I want you to throw it behind you. Now do you feel how light your hands feel? Good, good, good. Now put your arms to your side. All right, now God's love is filling our legs and our feet with strength. He's, the power is in our arms, wrapping us up, taking care of our worries and our thoughts. And it's filling our lungs because our lungs is where we breathe and have all this good stuff come in and out of our bodies. Oh, good. Now let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for my friends. I thank you so much for these wonderful friends who love you and are curious about you. Lord, we are thankful that your spirit is not only always with us, but in us. And we can imagine what it would feel like in our feet and in our legs and in our arms and in our lungs and our hearts and our minds, Father. We thank you, God, that you're just in and all around us, that you never leave us, that you help us to do what you ask us to do. And more than that, you first do for us what you're asking us to do. So God, I thank you that you are compassionate for us. I thank you that you love us. And I thank you that you're gonna help us do that for other people, the people that come in our lives. So God, I just pray that as we hear your story this week and we think about all these wonderful things, that you will give us your Holy Spirit to sort it all out in our minds and help us to practice it every day. God, we give you this time. We take your spirit and our in our bodies into worship and we glorify you, God. In your name I pray, amen. All right, friends. Keep standing on those strong legs and feet, and let's go worship. Whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through. Know that you're chasing after me makes me wanna run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know.
you have been doing such good work on this memory verse. And isn't this memory verse amazing? It tells us the three key things to showing God's love to everyone. Isn't that amazing? It shows us the three most important ways we can show God's love to the world. In this verse, it has so many good things. What are the three things that it says that we need to show God's love to the world? Oh, I hear those guesses. Good. Any more guesses? Right. It is to show justice, to have mercy, and to be humble. So justice, mercy, and humility. Those are the three big things and big ways we can show God's love to the world. So with that in mind, let's practice our memory verse one more time. Ready? Read it with me. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy and you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, 8. Let's read it one more time. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy and you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, 8. Great job. busy day today. Don't believe me? Check out my block! Oh, take a look at all this hustle and bustle! These people could use some compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. But who has time for compassion when you're so busy all the time? I mean, it's the same every day. Get up, get dressed, pop dart for breakfast, school, lunch, more school, then there's homework video games, a few selfies, dinner, music practice, and bed. And then the alarm goes off and you start all over again. <sighs> it's not just you that's busy. People are busy everywhere you look. Moms and dads, shh. Business people, buy all the things. <coughs> Servers, you have the iced tea with no lemon, you have the lemonade with no ice, you have a cup of ice with no tea, and a slice of lemon, right? It can seem like there's not enough time to show compassion. But as you'll see with Jesus in today's story, sometimes you have to make time. Pop-tart me. Yeah. <laughs> see you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Jesus spent time with people of every kind from every background. He answered trick challenges from important religious leaders and sincere questions from rich men. Sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor, then come follow me. Jesus didn't hesitate to welcome kids. Let the little children come to me. He was endlessly patient with his own friends when they argued about who should be first. The Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, he came to serve others. Even as Jesus made his last journey to Jerusalem, he didn't let what was ahead distract him from the people he met along the way. Uh, hey Jesus, this crowd we picked up in Jericho is really slowing us down. Want to pick up the pace? But Jesus didn't try to shake off the crowds that followed him. It's Jesus. Jesus. A short way ahead, a man named Bartimaeus sat by the road on a torn and dusty mat. He stretched out his arms desperately, hoping someone would drop a few coins in his empty hand. Please. 
Help me. Bartimaeus was blind. There was no work he could do to earn money, so he depended on the kindness of strangers passing by. The crowd quickly surrounded him. He's right there! Look it's him, I see Jesus! Jesus. I, I, I swear I see him over there. Jesus? Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. He'd heard stories of sick people who'd been healed by Jesus, and in his heart, he believed they were true. Jesus! Bartimaeus knew he couldn't let this chance slip away. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, be quiet. Jesus probably doesn't have any time for you. Son of David, have mercy on me. Let it go. Jesus! Through all the noise and clamor, Jesus heard Bartimaeus plea. It would have been easy to keep walking, to push on towards Jerusalem. But instead, Jesus stopped. Call for him. What? What's happening? Cheer up! On your feet! Bless your heart, Jesus is actually calling for you! Me? He, he heard me! Bartimaeus jumped up, tossing aside his dusty coat. He staggered towards the voice he'd heard. Hands in the crowd helped him to find his way. Jesus! What do you want me to do for you? Teacher! Teacher! I want to be able to see! Jesus smiled as he looked directly into Bartimaeus' unseeing eyes. Go, your faith has healed you. Bartimaeus blinked and blinked again. Bright colors and shapes flashed before his eyes, vivid and breathtaking. I, my eyes, uh, I can see. As a brand new world came into focus, Bartimaeus fixed his gaze on the face before him, the deep eyes and kind smile of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Thank you! Jesus nodded, then turned again towards Jerusalem. As the crowd began to move, Bartimaeus joined in to follow the man who had stopped for a few minutes to change his life. Jesus was very busy. He was busy teaching people and performing miracles. Crowds of people followed him wherever he went. So when a blind man named Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus, people told him to stop! Jesus doesn't have time to help! Somehow, through the noise of the crowd, Jesus heard Bartimaeus and made time to heal him. That means, if we're followers of Jesus, sometimes we need to make time to help others. After all, there are a lot of people on our block who need help. There are people who need understanding. There are people who need space. But how can we help others when we're so busy all the time? Well, sometimes it means giving up what you want to do so you can do what someone else needs. There are only so many hours in the day. We should use at least some of that time showing compassion to the people around us who need it. That's the one thing to remember today. Make time to help others. You may not be able to help everyone, but if one person makes time to help another person, then pretty soon there's a chain reaction of compassion. And Pop-Tarts always help. You get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart. And let's not forget, you two get Pop-Tarts! See you around! Okay, friends, remember, God doesn't ask you to do anything He hasn't already done for you first. Isn't that amazing? So this week, remember, He is compassionate for you, He is kind to you, and He loves you. So be kind and compassionate and loving towards yourself, and then be kind, loving, and compassionate towards others. We gotta do it, we gotta practice. Okay, I love you, I will see you next week, I can't wait. Have a great week. Got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still. No, you have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. All my, all my life.
up the call to serve you. Serve you. You have given me a job to do. I wanna love the world just like you. 